come under a significant amount of fire lately for allegedly condoning unfair labor practices at its Foxconn factories in China. The issue has become quite controversial and has resulted in petitions against both Apple and Foxconn. And last month, the Fair Labor Association conducted an audit of Foxconn Chinese factories at Apple's request and found numerous violations. Although the manufacturing giant promises to remedy the conditions, there is still skepticism regarding the future production of Apple products. And the Economic Policy Institute held a forum last week to discuss these issues and to also compare Foxconn and Apple's efforts in Brazil to the current conditions in China. And Ross Eisenbray, the vice president of the Economic Policy Institute, is joining us now by way of Skype to talk about this forum and the suggestions that were made going forward. Thanks for being with us today, Ross. I'm happy to be here, Abby. Great. Well, for starters, can you just discuss with us what you know about the working con conditions in the Foxconn factories in China? Uh, yes. Uh, everybody pretty much agrees that workers there regularly work 60 to 70 hours a week, uh, which is both uh, beyond Apple's code of conduct and illegal under Chinese law. Uh, they have uh, a large workforce of young people who, 16 to 18 year old students who they call interns, who some of whom are, are forced to work there by the vocational schools that uh, they attend. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Fair Labor Association agrees that many of them are working in areas that have nothing to do with their uh, the training that they're in school to get. So uh, there, there's really not much value to them. They're just a workforce for Foxconn and there apparently is a deal with these schools to uh, make them do this work. Uh, there have been uh, terrible uh, health and safety issues uh, including chemical exposures and explosions from uncontrolled aluminum dust and there are also problems probably with people breathing that aluminum dust. Uh, and then there's the problem of military style management where workers are abused by their supervisors, they're regularly humiliated uh, if they make a mistake, they're forced to march and chant as if they were in the military service. Uh, it's a very oppressive work situation for many. So where do you think that the blame lies? Is it with both Apple and, and Foxconn or, or should one be more to blame than the other? I think Apple is certainly to blame because Apple is in control of the situation. Apple has the capacity because it makes such a big profit to offer a big, better margin to Foxconn. If they paid more per unit for their products that Foxconn is assembling for them, Foxconn would have more room to pay the workers better. I, I think in essence Apple could raise the wages, you know, could, could even double the wages for Foxconn workers at, at uh, hardly any expense to Apple. And uh, so they have the power to do that. They're, they've chosen not to do that. And they know what the situation is at these factories. They know that there were 18 suicide attempts and 14 successful in 2010. So they know that some of them are very desperate. Uh, they had a report as far back as 2005 uh, about all of these conditions about excessive overtime, uh, about the health and safety problems, about the fact that workers don't have a voice uh, in their factory. They hired an outside consultant. No one has seen what that consultant was telling them, but they made commitments you know, six years ago. And here we are six years later and nothing has changed. So you have to say that Apple has been derelict. Uh, if, they, if they ever intended uh, to clean up conditions, make things better at the Foxconn plants. They failed utterly. And Apple, you know, is a very efficient, powerful organization that when it wants to get something done, can get it done. They, they haven't gotten this done. Well, at the EPI's forum last week, an interesting comparison was made to, to Foxconn and Apple's efforts in Brazil. So can you discuss this with us and explain what, what's different? Uh, yeah, uh, Foxconn has been operating in Brazil for five or six years, I think, mm -hmm. five years now. And uh, unlike their situation in China, they immediately had to have union representation for their workers because in Brazil, by law, the unions uh, represent all of the employees in an area in an industry. Mm -hmm. So there's a base 
contract, sort of a base collective bargaining agreement that all employers have to agree to. And Foxconn agreed to it. And after a, a sort of a bumpy start, they, they conform to that agreement. Mm -hmm. Then on top of that, the workers can uh, ask the union to bargain for them uh, improvements beyond that basic contract. And the workers there have done that with the Metal Workers Union of Junjai, uh, Brazil. And they've gotten better transportation allowances and, and uh, a better cafeteria service. They've gotten um, higher wages. They've actually bargained higher wages beyond the, the, uh, the base contract. And the net result is that the workers there are making about three times as much per hour as the workers in China. And they have, un under Brazilian law, they have uh, four months paid maternity leave, 30 days of paid vacation. They have a, a lot of benefits that the Chinese workers don't have. Right. And uh, just recently, Apple started producing at the Foxconn plant. So it's an interesting situation to see mm -hmm. Apple having its production at a plant where the workers are, are are essentially making three times as much as they do in China. Right. Well, after the, the Fair Labor Association's audit was released, Apple and Foxconn both agreed to a plan to, to improve the labor practices in China. But do you think that this plan uh, is enough? And really, just explain what, what the plan would do. Well, one of the, the key points in the plan is to reduce the excessive overtime that, that workers uh, have been scheduled for. And what's interesting is that they agreed to conform to Chinese law, but not for 15 months, mm. that they plan to go on uh, scheduling people for excessive overtime uh, in violation of Chinese law. They're very open about this for uh, until uh, June of next year. Mm. Uh, they talk about, they don't really specify how they're going to uh, give the workers more voice they, they admit that there is no independent union, uh, that the Health and Safety Committee, for example, that, that could have worker participation is completely management dominated. The, the managers actually appoint the employees who are on that uh, committee. The workers don't, don't do that themselves. Uh, they admit that there are problems in the, with these student interns, uh, both that they have them working illegally on night shifts and they have them working uh, excessive illegal overtime and they say they'll put an end to that and that they'll try to limit the students who are doing this to students who have some kind of connection to mm -hmm. uh, Foxconn's uh, industrial production. Uh, but overall it, it was, it, it, it's not a very encouraging situation that, that we get a report that basically puts off changes for more than a year and uh, doesn't really promise anything more than, than Apple and Foxconn promised uh, in 2006. Wow. Well, it's clear that, that a lot of companies look to Apple as their example. So does this and should this put, put more pressure on the tech giant to get it right? Uh, I, you know, I hope that Apple is serious and that they, that they will get this right. But I, I think there's more and more attention and hopefully uh, what you're doing will bring uh, some additional attention and consumers, you know, will react. I, I think that uh, people expect Apple to do better. Mm -hmm. People ha have believed Apple's commitments in the past and if they go on making commitments and breaking them, you know, sooner or later that's going to penetrate the buying public. Right. So, so on that note, what, what is the EPI doing and also encouraging others to do to, to raise more awareness of these concerns? Well, we're, you know, we're a think tank and a, a research organization. We, we don't do public organizing, but, right. but uh, one of the partners uh, that we put this forum on with is the Worker Rights Consortium. Uh, they will be working, I think, pretty closely with the students and scholars against corporate uh, misbehavior, uh, SACOM, and China Labor Watch and some other organizations to have build a campaign. I think they will build a public campaign to uh, hold Apple accountable. Uh, there may be something like a monthly scorecard to show whether the overtime hours have actually been reduced. Uh, I, I, people have ideas. I, I don't know exactly what they'll, what, uh, they'll prove to be. 
Okay, okay well, we'll see what happens. Thank you so much for talking with us, Ross. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Abby. You're welcome. Reporting for WebPro News, I'm Abby Johnson.